They know when class starts. Mm -hmm. okay. I'm book would be great. Okay, so yesterday, the end of your notice and wonder you had a reflection question the question was what could you do if you harness the wind everybody was supposed to write that question in your notebook on the bottom of page three and then you were supposed to answer it bryson what did you write as your answer what would you do if you harness the wind Bottom of page three. Yep. What would you do if you could harness the wind? Make energy. And what would you do with the energy? Like what? You can make like electricity. Like what? Like electricity. You could make electricity. And make stuff move. Make what stuff? Windmill. Make a what? Windmill. Make windmill. Okay. What would you do, um, Haley? I would use the electricity. You would use it to build electricity. What would you do with your electricity that you would make? You don't know? You have no clue what you would do with the electricity that you make. What do you like to do with electricity? Come on, y'all want to do more than build a window. Watch TV. Watch TV. What else would you want to do with electricity? Haley, what would you want to do with electricity? What would you and Amber want to do with electricity? Leave your brother out of it. You and Amber. Want to watch TV show? Okay, so you'd make electricity and use it to power the TV to watch TV show. Okay, um, Aaliyah McGill. I'm gonna say last name because I'm looking at this other Aaliyah. Oh, goodness. Aaliyah McGill, what did you write that you would do if you could harness the wind? Yeah, speak up, speak up. Cool down with the wind. Good job. Okay. So you would cool yourself down because it gets hot down here in the south, doesn't it? Okay. How much energy are we talking about? A strong wind, a weak wind? Are we talking about strong wind? Kimber, what would you do? Watch Netflix. Watch Netflix. So you would oh. harness, you would harness wind energy to make electricity and watch Netflix, right? You speak my language. I like Netflix. I'll watch it. Well, what would you do, Joanna? If you could harness wind, what would you do with the inner with the wind? What? Make your own windmill. What would you do with the windmill? So you would harness the wind to make energy and use the energy to find your phone. Very cool. All right. So 
What? Okay, so what most of us said was that we would harness the wind to use wind power to make life easier, right? Even with Aaliyah's answer, she didn't say that we'd make energy from it, but she still said that she would make her life more comfortable using something from the wind, right? Okay. okay, so people had the idea that wind could make life easier hundreds of years ago. Is this doing? Megan, can you see my notebook right now? Nope, now you can't. It went away, didn't it? Yeah. Okay, now you can see my notebook in my speckled arm? Yes, ma'am. Okay. All right, so people hundreds of years ago designed the first windmills. Some early examples of those early windmills were the ones that Mondrian painted, okay? And I think I mentioned yesterday that I would show you paintings that Mondrian is better known for, correct? So let me pull up more typical Mondrian paintings, which you guys are probably familiar with. Mondrian painted it. Dude, I just said it. Just mentioned it. I need you to pay attention, Bryson. This is a typical Mondrian painting. I'm guessing you guys have recognized that, right? That is a typical Mondrian painting. Notice that those are later, 1920. 1940. So he painted the windmills 1917 and 1907. So he started out making more realistic paintings and then he moved to more, I guess you'd call them abstract, more modernist paintings. They're very vibrant and they're actually highly balanced make beautiful stained glass. That's a print. That's not the original. The originals are worth hundreds of thousands, if not millions of dollars. Yeah. That is what Mondrian is known for is these. It's not the windmill paintings. Okay, his windmills are early in his career. Okay, I told you guys would recognize Mondrian. It's not that he's known for his windmill paintings. That's a print. Okay. All right, so early examples of windmills were what Mondrian painted in the pictures we looked at yesterday, okay? People later learned how to use windmills to save lives. Okay. They weren't just used to make wheat. They later learned how to save lives with using them. Okay. To learn how this is possible, we're going to continue exploring the phenomenon question how do windmills harness the wind? So I'm going to be an optimist because I generally am. And I'm going to try this link again. 
So for my online friends, be patient with me while I, did I drop something? Yeah. Behind you. Uh, well, I'm not driving anywhere for a while, so I think I can safely put those back in my pocket. <laughs> Things to make you go, hmm. All right, be patient with me, my online friends, while I see if Link is up today. We shall see. PhD, please stop talking. SCI.link, because even at home last night, this wasn't working. 1158. Fabulous. PhD science apparently is just completely down. That's just fabulous. Hmm. Hmm. Let me see if the PowerPoint will let me open it. Ah, ha, ha. Come on, let's move today. Yeah, it'd be great if this worked, right? Also be great if this didn't hijack my display screen too. <clears throat> Any day now. Holy moly. Uh. Yeah, not liking this one bit. Mm. Virtual friends, I am still here. I'm just really disliking school security right this moment. Bye-bye mm. for that. Yeah, I get that. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I knew I'd do that. Yes. Thankfully, this time I actually know what to do. Mm. Nope, not that one. Is it still on the weird screen? Yay. Yep, I know I got to find display. This PC. Please don't talk, my friends. View system properties. Nope. Display. Extend. Nope. Duplicate. Fly. Keep changes. Yay! See, 
anytime I mess with PowerPoints through PhD projected, it hijacks my display. Isn't that fabulous? It's so much fun. Not. Okay. Are you going to share your screen to that screen? Um, I have now that I finally unhijacked my computer, I'm going to find what I was trying to find. Malawi country. And then I'll share this with you guys. Okay, guys, I need you quiet. Since I can't use the information from PhD science, because apparently the PhD curriculum is blocked by Caddo Parish, even though that's the curriculum they give us, I have to find it my own way. Okay, go figure. Okay, here we go. All right, so we are going to be reading from the book called The Boy Who Harnessed the Wind. And this takes place in an African country called Malawi. Okay, this is the country. They have elephants in their region. I'm going to back out so you can see where Malawi is. It's beside Zambia. It's beside Congo. You see it's a relatively small country in the southern part of the continent of Africa. Okay, here is Africa. Malawi is down here. Everybody see that? Okay. This is the region we're talking about. Lake Malawi is along the edge of it. Okay. They do have elephants nearby. It's landlocked. It's, um, has a national park at the bottom of it. Let's see what else we can find out about it. I'm trying to find out. Not necessarily a map, but about other features about Malawi. Has a population of about, yeah, yeah, no. Has a population of 18 million people. So about 20 million people, okay. It is exceedingly poor. It is among the world's least developed countries. Most people depend heavily on agriculture, so growing things. Most people live in the country. Um, they get most of their money from outside resources, so other countries sending money in. Uh, low life expectancy. What does that mean? What does it mean if a country has a low life expectancy? America has a pretty high life expectancy. What does that mean? Nope. It doesn't mean anything about the number of people. A low life expectancy means people don't live very long. And high infant mortality means, no, high infant mortality means if you have 10 babies born, you might have six that die. So do people tend to live very long there? No. And out of the babies that are born, a high number of them will die. 
We're not drawing and doodling. We're paying attention to the lesson because this is part of the lesson. Okay, believe it or not, it is. Okay. So most of the people make money from growing crops. It's not from manufacturing. Most of the money that comes into the country comes from other countries, just flat out giving them money because it's a very, very poor country. There's just not a lot of money there. High, high, high poverty. Unbelievably high poverty. Poverty in the United States doesn't touch the kind of poverty they have there. Okay, there's some art on rocks. They have problems with their politics. They have problems with human rights, excessive force with their police forces. Um, geography is beautiful there. Absolutely beautiful. Anybody heard of cichlids? You know, those freshwater fish that kind of look like saltwater fish. They're bright blue, yellow. They have stripes on them. They come from there. All of them come from there. Lake Malawi, that's there in Malawi. The big lake that's on the side of it. Okay. So they're having a way to bring in water because drought is a major problem. And that's the difference between life and death, literally. That's, that's how you feed your family. It's not like you can go to the grocery store. And it's not like people would have money to even be able to afford to go to the grocery store. Okay, so having water, having food, that's the difference between your whole family or even your village surviving or not. Okay. Not the most fun part of the lesson, but you got to kind of understand the background of this. Malawi is heavily populated, one of the world's poorest countries. The country is less developed economically than most others. There's little industry, in other words, there's not big factories where people work. Limited money invested in education. The only education there is, is for rich people who can raise money to send their kids to school because you have to pay a lot to go to school there. And for the people who can afford to send their kids to school where they have to pay for it, sometimes the cost of uniforms can be the thing that keeps the kids out of school. That's pretty sad, isn't it? And healthcare. Healthcare is expensive too. Sometimes just the cost of healthcare can be the difference between someone surviving or not. Again, very, very sad. 90% of the population, look around. There's 14 of us in here. That means out of the 14 of us, 13 of us would live in the country. Now, I know this is a rural school, but even being a rural school, most of us don't live in Keithville. A lot of us live in Shreveport. I do. Raise your hand if you live in Shreveport. And this is a rural school, and a bunch of us live in Shreveport even. You know? So agriculture is very important to people in the economy. Based on what you know about the country, what types of challenges do you think people may face in Malawi? Food shortages, definitely. What other kinds of challenges? Water. Water would be a problem, especially fresh water, right? Safe water. What other kinds of challenges? Do you think there's buses no. for schools? They probably have to walk. They would probably have to walk to school no. if they could afford school. And their life will probably hurt. Mm -hmm. What about electricity? Uh, 
if they have windows. But they probably don't because the materials are expensive. Materials are expensive to even build a windmill. Yeah. So do you think there's electricity everywhere? No. 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 Aaliyah. Shelter could be a problem too. That's exactly right. Very intuitive. Only one in 11 people in Malawi have access to electricity. So in our classroom, there's 14 of us in here, including me. That means one person in here would have access to electricity. Can you imagine that? The rest of us living with no electricity ever. No. I cannot imagine that because that would be horrible. Ms. Ramita was not real happy this morning that her house was in the dark. She had to get ready in the dark. Her daughter had her final. I don't know if y'all are aware of this, but her daughter is going to nurse anesthesiology school. She would only have to take a couple more classes to be an actual anesthesiologist doctor. Yeah, that's high level of education. Her final is today. And she's having to go in a hot spot from her phone take her final for her schooling today yeah now that's one person out of there's 50 something of us including students and teachers one person being without electricity for a short period of time let's reverse that and say out of 11 five of us ever have an electricity that's a pretty hard thing to imagine, isn't it? Yeah. Okay, let's keep going on this one, okay? Because I want us to get to this part. This one part, okay? Oh, it looks fun. Do we get to make one? Sort of, kind of. Without electricity, what else do they not have? Power. What? Power. What do you mean by power? Like TV. They don't have TV. What else do they not have? Phone. Probably don't have cell phones. If they do have cell phones, what? Can they use their cell phones all the time? Computers. Probably don't have computers. Or if they do have a computer, is everybody having to share it? Yes, they are. They're having to plug it in one place and leave it there, and everybody's having to share it. They would probably have to pay for it. They would, because there are cell phones, but they would have to plug it into the one house that has electricity and everybody would use it. And you better believe everybody's protective of it if they have it, right? Yeah. But that means everybody doesn't have a cell phone, do they? No, they don't have a cell phone. What else would they not have? Aaliyah. Storing their food. Absolutely. Has anybody in here ever eaten Ethiopian food? Oh, no. That sounds disgusting. That's the first one. was. Anybody ever go to Dallas very often? Okay. There's quite a few Ethiopian restaurants over there. If you ever want to be adventurous in your eating, <laughs> um, we ate Ethiopian two or three times and twice it was pretty good but the last time let's just say it was more more Ethiopian than we were accustomed to <laughs> it was uh yeah their their beef sushi tradition was just no, it, it did not need refrigeration because like Aaliyah said, they would not have refrigeration. And so this did not need refrigeration and a lot of things were soaked in vinegar because vinegar will stop um, bacteria from growing. It's very sour, most of our food. Sourdough and vinegar in a lot of food. It was not to our... Um, not stuff that we were used to. And it was right before we flew out to Paris, France. You went to Paris? Yeah. <gasps> All right. 
would they have lights? No. no. That's what I was about to say. What would happen if Malawi were to experience a drought? Uh, they would die. They wouldn't have They would have they water. They would die and they would not be necessarily really healthy to begin with. Like if we had a drought, we're pretty healthy to begin with, aren't we? Yeah. I mean, our, our lunches might not look real good, but they're full of nutrition. They are. Yeah. They don't look appetizing. They don't always smell appetizing in my room, but they are full of nutrition. We're starting out healthy, but people in Malawi where the water might not necessarily be healthy, they're not starting out healthy. And when they then have a drought, they're, they're not really well equipped for it, are they? What would happen to their food? Oh, it would, it would All the crops would die pretty quickly, wouldn't they? Yeah. The stuff that's growing wouldn't have water to continue so growing. They couldn't grow it, so they couldn't and the land animals that drink water. The land animals that drink water would die too. So they would lose their animals. They would lose their plants. And what did I say that most people do there for a living? Farm. Farm. So they would do what? They, they, um, they would lose. They lose their farms too. They lose their jobs, wouldn't they? Uh -huh. So their one form of making money would be gone, right? Yeah. So if they had a drought, that would be devastating for that the families and for their jobs, right? Uh -huh. So a drought would be horrible. What would you Correct. do? Sorry. Sorry? Oh, that's true. They didn't have any cars. They do. There's a lot of cars there. It's fancy. So, do they have doors? Do they have doors? For privacy. Probably, but it might be curtains because it'd be cooler. Yeah. Um, a lot of places I've seen animals come in and out. What about a vicious animal? Goat goat's mighty good food, too. Oh, my goodness, goat is good food. Oh, you should have yes. seen my goat. Yes. Pork chops. 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 Man. Why is she chase me around the car when I get off work? She was mean. She was sweet when we got her, but she turned mean when she got older. All right, so we're going to read part of the boy who harnessed the wind. Oh. If we have time, we'll read all of it today. I don't know if we will. If not, I've got two copies of this book in my class. They're in the back back there on the same shelf as the glue sticks. I only ask that my students put it back on that same shelf as the glue sticks. Can you okay. have a part one page we left off there? Okay. okay, so I want you to think about these questions as I read it, okay? What steps will the boy take to help save his village by harnessing the wind? Okay? So here's the first picture. In a small village in Malawi. It's frozen. Now is it? Yes. Okay. It's stuck on the lesson two with your arm on it. <laughs> Zoom being weird. Okay. okay. Better. And now the yes, color is weird. All right. I hate that it's being so reflective. In a small village in Malawi, where people had no money for lights, 
Nightfall came quickly and hurried poor farmers to bed. But for William, the darkness was best for dreaming. Here's a picture of William. Okay. He dreamed of building things and taking them apart. Like the trucks with bottle cap wheels parked under his bed and pieces of radios that he'd crack open and wonder, if I can hear the music, then where is the band? His grandpa's tales of magic also whispered in the pitch black of his room. Witch planes passed through the window while ghost dancers twirled around the room as if a hundred men were inside their bodies. Here he is outside taking care of the plants. At dawn in the fields, William scanned the maize rows for magical beings. What are What is maize? You might know, so, know what maize is. What is it? No, 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 maize, M-A-I-Z-E. What is maize? Maize is corn, guys. William scanned the maize rows for magical beings, then wondered as a truck rumbled past. How does this engine make it go? Pay attention where you throw that hoe, his father shouted. You'll cut off your foot. These are sharp. Dad is telling him to pay attention so he doesn't cut off his foot because that's sharp. Yeah. A lot of us have. We have it here. All right, let's pay attention to the book, not talking. For all his power over dancers and flying things, magic could not bring the rain. Without water, the sun rose angry each morning and scorched the fields, turning the maize into dust. Without food, Malawi began to starve. Look, this is drying up. See, the corn is drying up. See the corn drying up? That's the sun. The talking, stop. Soon William's father gathered the children and said, from now on, we eat only one meal per day. Make it last. In the evenings, they sat around the lantern and ate their handful, watching hungry people pass like spirits along the roads. Why didn't they share with people passing? They didn't have enough food. That's also why they're only eating one meal a day. And it's not very much food, is it? No. Money also disappeared with the rain. Papani, his father said, I am sorry. You will have to drop out of school. Now William stood on the road and watched the lucky students pass. Pass alone with the monster in his belly and the lump in his throat. For weeks, he sulked under the mango tree until he remembered the library down the road, a gift from the Americans. He found science books filled with brilliant pictures. With his English dictionary close by, William put together how engines moved those big trucks and how radios pulled their music from the sky. But the greatest picture of all was a machine taller than the tallest tree with blades like a fan, a giant pinwheel, something to catch magic. Slowly, he built the sentence, windmills can produce electricity and pump water. Okay. 
okay? So think about what steps the boy is going to take to save his village while harnessing the wind. What magic do you think William is hoping to catch? And how will it help his family? What is the magic? Uh, not quite. What's the magic though? What magic is he wanting to catch, Michaela? Trying to catch energy from the pump of water. Energy in the form from what? Um, wind. Wind. He thinks the wind is magic. And he's wanting to pump out water. So he wants the wind to pump out water. And he's also wanting to get what from the wind? What is it? Electricity. Electricity. Absolutely. What steps will William need to take to save his village by harnessing the wind? Can he just plop up a windmill anywhere? No. He has to learn how to make it. He has to learn how to make a windmill. He's going to have to get materials. He's got to put a spot where it is best. What does he need in the spot? Mm -hmm. What's the first thing you need? What? Wind. Wind. Is it equally windy everywhere? No. No. So he needs a windy place. That's the first thing you need is a windy place to put it, right? Okay. So he needs to find a place where it's windy. He needs to learn a lot about how to make, how to make it. Um, so he needs to learn how windmills harness wind, right? So where would he learn that? In books. In books which are found in the library. In the library. So we are going to think about materials we could use to construct a windmill. Obviously this is not what William would have. Unfortunately this goes away. Aww. Sorry guys. I know it's That's a really good book. A good book. Um, there's a bunch of different versions of this. I have a longer version down there also, like a novel version of it too. This one, I didn't mark it, but the other one has blue tape on the outside of it and it's marked for how many AR points it is. I think it's a half point, I think, but I also have a novel version, if I'm not mistaken over there. There's so many different versions of this. There's also a Netflix movie version of this. It's rated, P it's rated PG. So I can't show it in my classroom. Have a seat. It's rated PG. It is an excellent movie. Okay. I had a parent last year complain. Who's phone? Um, I had a parent complain last year because parts of it are sad because there's a drought. And I'm like, Fox and the Hound is sad too. Uh, <laughs> a lot of movies are sad. Um, yes, it's sad. That's reality. It is very sad. Well, I mean, reality with where this is happening, Malawi, it's sad. It's, the background of it is very sad. The inspiring part is this kid is a child like you guys. I think he's 10 or 11, maybe 12 when he does this. He saves his village, guys. That is awesome. Using science. Mm -hmm. Completely inspiring. So many people would give up. Completely inspiring. He's hard-headed. He's stubborn. 
and he uses that for a positive. Hello. Hi, meet your teacher. That's just like me. Stubborn is not a bad thing. You guys have heard me say that before, right? right Stubborn is a positive thing. So, do, so is ADHD. Hi, <laughs> that's your teacher too. Okay, so Stubborn's a good thing. That's this guy. He's come to the US and met our former president before. Um, Obama, if I'm not mistaken, I believe. Okay. Um, he's an inspiration, totally. Okay, there's a Netflix film out about him. Um, maybe 10 years, eight years ago. It's been a little while. He's, he's a young adult now. So, one day he's about four, uh, years age. Okay, so the rest of the book is great. The movie is inspiring. Okay, but it's sad. Just letting you know. Right. Yeah, a lot of young adult. All right, so we're going to construct physical models. And it says, think about what you would need to construct a windmill that's a waste of your time because this is what we have constructed okay so here's our blade here is part of our base here's some more of the base this is what we're going to light up thankfully my husband and i already um went through our parts because we used this last year also. And the one that we used primarily last year, the light had blown out. These kits run $80 and they've been discontinued by the manufacturer. They were discontinued over a year ago. So you can't find these anymore. This is, I'm supposed to say a magical part because I'm not supposed to tell you what's in there. This is one of our wires. This is another wire amongst my husband's many jobs. He does electrical work. And he said, it's actually not supposed to work the way we put it together, but it does. So he said, apparently someone has things messed up in the system. So yeah, that coming from an electrician. All right. So what you're going to do, because I think I told this class this, but I'm not positive. Part of science is you need to experience failure yeah. as much as you need to experience success. That's science. That's what he so yeah, he had to experience lots of failure before he ever had success. And then he experienced taking it apart and fixing it and making it better. Yeah. That's science. That's what science is. It's not putting it together the right way the first time. So what I would normally do is pass out a kit per table do that welcome to COVID, right um so you're going to tell me how to put it together okay because normally you guys would be putting things together and seeing what doesn't work I actually have another problem with that i had students last year be too rough on this and almost break this i can't get replacement parts they don't exist and this costs a lot see see my reminder to myself of all my students that need to test i wrote it on my hands last night so you're going to tell me how to put this thing together, okay? No, all you guys are. <clears throat> so this locks down there. Beyond that, you guys tell me how to build it. Put this right here. Yeah. Okay. Then put put that yellow thing. Yeah. Put the yellow thing. And then put that. Um, Look at this stem. Look at that. That See? definitely goes together. Yeah. Okay. All right, got that. This looks like it goes there. Yeah. Okay. What? What? Like, I'll 
That didn't fix it. I'm trying to make it easier to see, but that did not fix it. That made it harder to see. We can see it like this. I think we did something wrong. Okay. How about that? What? What? No. No? No. It's facing up. It goes sideways. It goes sideways. Oh, she heard it. Oh, she just had turned it. What about the board? What is the weapon smell? What? This? Yeah. Wherever you want it to. But now I got wires. Oh, oh, no. oh put the wires around the bottom. Where? Put them like. Put them like this. Put them like this. Snap it on? Yeah. Wrap it around Just anywhere? Wrap it around the bottom. No. Should I make it plus to plus? Because I've got pluses and pluses. Plus to plus? Yeah. Okay. And then minus to minus? Yes. Okay. Now, what do I need to do now? Turn it on. How do I turn it on? Oh, with the red thing. The red button. There's no button. <laughs> Fan. Okay. On the middle. There's no pressing a button. It's supposed to light up. Whoops. Oh. Oh. No light. Yep. Okay. So, what do I need to change? Maybe the wires. The wires. Okay. So switch just one side then, right? No, I mean switch just on the this thing, right? Because if I switched them both on both of these, it'd be like not switch anything at all. Look. See it? You, everybody see it? So, does that mean that electricity was generated? Yes. Yes, yes it does. So. This is fun. Yep, y'all get to draw it. Aww. All right. I'm going to try to make this easier for you to view. I'm trying to make it where you can see it. Whoa, didn't mean to do that. Yeah, with this. Can we color it? Color it? Uh, no. You would think it's easy, but it's really not. It is. Look at it. It's so easy. It isn't that hard to draw. It's hard to draw. Don't we have to make the wires? Oh, yeah. You're going to have to make wires. Hold on. I need the talking stops. I'm not having luck here making this show for you guys. You're going to need at the very least a red colored pencil. If you borrow a colored pencil of mine, you have to put it beside it, but everybody should have their own colored pencils. I've given them out. Kaylee. You dumped out half my colored pencils. Why is this not going on like it's supposed to? I know it's yours because your name was written on the box. Oh, I didn't get it. 
Why is there talking? There. Now everybody has to stay at their seat you unless you get the pencil. Too. You have to draw all the components. I know it's hard to see because I have a black tablecloth. Here, let me see if this makes it any better. Oh, that makes it better, doesn't it? But look, if we complete the circuit, we can trace this red wire all the way from this spot over to here to the red. And then this goes over here to the black. And the black wire goes over here to this one. Everybody see it? If you use a colored pencil, you have to put it outside the bucket. Do not put it back in the bucket because I spray them all with Lysol. Your black is your pencil. Red is the red you have to use. I look terrible when I draw it. This is the one that I don't do a good job drawing. Do we have to be good? I have to be able to tell what you're doing. Remember, you have to label it, okay? That's fine to me. Mine looks awful. I do it. What does? Fine, because I have to draw one. Not today, but. Do it in pencil in case we change. Well, we will be changing the names later. Do it. Label it. Guys, when you label the parts of your model, do it. Do your labels in regular pencil. That way we can change out the names, okay? These are called wires. Blade. Base.
Yes, please uh, write your explanation under it, okay? Everybody hear me with that? Write your explanation underneath your drawing, okay? You might want to write about how we had to switch up the cords, the wires.
How are you going to do that? They don't make you then. Yeah, that was just continued. Probably the only ones you get fine right now are over two hundred dollars a kit. Uh -huh. That brought you up to eighty one C. On the test, Bailey. No, I'm talking about her. I had to make a correction on her test. All right, guys, I've got to make a correction in my grade book, so please stop talking. I went through my notebook to see if we uh, my husband and I made it last night. Colby's the one that helped me with it last year. Uh, once I got reminded how to do it. it. Takes a village to raise a truck and be idiot. All right. All right, Miss Megan, we're gonna finish up this book. Okay. Okay. So I wanted to make sure that we weren't going to read this for any other day of the module and we're not so let's finish it now he closed his eyes and saw a windmill outside his home pulling electricity from the breeze and bringing light to the dark valley he saw the machine drawing cool water from the ground sending it gushing through the thirsty fields turning the maize tall and green even when the farmer's prayers for rain went unanswered. This windmill was more than a machine. It was a weapon to fight hunger. Yes. Majetsi ah Mefepo, <laughs> he whispered. I will build electric wind. These illustrations are beautiful. In the junkyard, pieces appeared like rusted treasures in the tall grass. Joanna's uh, comment, I believe it was, about buying the pieces. There's nowhere to even buy them. A tractor fan, some pipe, in here, bearings and bolts that required every muscle to remove. Tonga, he'd shout to the birds and spiders, holding up his prize. But as William dragged his medals home, people called out, this boy is Masala. 
Only crazy people play with trash. So he literally would go to the junkyard and find scraps and build it from scraps. Uh huh. So he would go to the junkyard and just find junk. And people made fun of him. Look at the bicycle wheel and the tire. And people made fun of him. After many weeks, William arranged his pieces in the dirt. A broken bicycle, rusted bottle caps, and plastic pipe. Even a small generator that powered a headlight on a bike. <laughs> right? For three days, he bolted, banged, and tinkered while chickens squawked and dogs barked. And neighbors shook their heads saying, what's Masala doing now? Masala, I think, means crazy person. His cousin Jeffrey and best friend Gilbert soon appeared. Muli Bwangi, they greeted. Can we help with electric wind? Grab your pangas and follow me, he said, and took them into the forest. Together, they swung their sharp blades into the trunks of blue gum trees, then hammered them together to make the tower. Standing atop, William shouted, bring it up, while the boys tugged and heaved. A crowd gathered below and gazed at this strange machine that now leaned and wobbled like a clumsy giraffe. Some giggled and teased, but William waited for the wind. Like always, it came. First a breeze, then a gusting gale. The tower swayed and the blades swung round. Doesn't exactly look like the most beautiful thing, does it? With sore hands once slowed by hunger and darkness, William connected wires to a small bulb which flickered at first, then surged as bright as the sun. Tonga, he shouted, I have made electric winds. Oh, wow, that's a word. Watch a top window, a man yelled. Well done. As the doubters clapped and cheered, William knew he had just begun. Light could not fill empty bellies, but another windmill could soak the dry ground, creating food where once there was none. Magetsi Amafefo, electric wind, can feed my country, William thought. And that was the strongest magic of all. That's a picture of his windmill. <laughs> that looks about the chunkiest thing ever, but it works. It doesn't have to look pretty. It doesn't have to look pretty, but it brought water up from the ground and it made energy. It looks dangerous. <laughs> it does look dangerous. So he uses windmill to charge a car battery allowing him to power four light bulbs in his parents' house. But his dream of pumping water wasn't achieved until several years later when he built his green machine, which pulled water from a small well near his home and fed his mother's garden, allowing her to grow vegetables year round. In 2007, William was discovered by some journalists and invited to speak at the TED conference in Tanzania. He had never been in an airplane or even seen the internet. Many people were moved by his country, by his story, and donated money to help send him back to school and eventually install a solar powered water pump that irrigated his father's fields, forever protecting them from hunger. William is now a student at Dartmouth College in Hanover, New Hampshire. So he's a student here in the United States. He is studying to be an engineer and plans to return to Malawi to work on renewable energy for electricity and pumping water in villages. So he's actually a college student now. 
So, yeah. Netflix film. Okay. Let's line up. All right. See you later, Megan. Get a Bye. copy of your picture and send it to me, okay? Yes.